All right. Uh, I have a lot of SMA things, uh, adapters and uh, attenuators and other types of things, calibration standards and things. Um, uh, some people have mentioned this on my channel before, is whenever you use something like an SMA, you should be using a torque wrench, okay? Um, it's hard to get, uh, if you're just doing it by hand, and uh, you're, you're grabbing one of these things and you're just rotating by hand. Yeah, it's harder to kind of grab a, a grip on there. Now, when I was doing this in work, we had little plastic uh, donuts that went over these things and you could grab your fingers and, and it gave you a, a live your arm and allowed you to tighten them quite good by fingers. Uh, so we use those a lot. Um, I don't have any of those, but I, I'd show one if I could, but it was just, you could probably 3D print one real easy. It was just a, a little hex on the inside and then a, uh, a neural thing on the outside, and you could, they were about an inch in diameter, maybe three quarters of an inch in diameter, and you could use those to spin things on. But people say, eh, you really should be using a torque wrench, right? And I've showed before, I've got this little wrench here, and I said I had calibrated fingers, and uh, I'm able to screw these on nice and tight and not over torque them, okay? Um, but that's kind of cheesy. You really should have a torque wrench, right? If you really want to make good measurements. Now, when do you need to have really, really good measurements? You, you really are looking to get really, really low noise type of things and mismatches and things. It's really, it's hard to get a good instrument that, that makes you use one of these. Um, so, uh, what I'm saying is that unless you're making really, really precise measurements, you're probably okay just finger tightening them pretty aggressively um, or using a little wrench and applying some torque. Now, um, I have measured how much torque I apply as a general rule, and it is less than any torque wrench I've come across, okay? So I have always been applying less torque than a torque wrench, and I swear that my tightening of the of the connector is good enough, right? That to get that little extra little bit in there, you know, probably maybe doesn't affect the measurement that well. It probably, if, if it's in an airplane or avionics or something and it's gonna back out because of vibration and stuff, yeah, maybe you do wanna have torque on it and stuff. But uh, this has always done me well. But I wanted to do a video on torque wrenches and I thought I'd step up the plate uh, on my channel and spend some of your guys money. Thank you for Patreons. Thank you for subscribers and stuff. Um, I bought some torque wrenches. And so here are the torque wrenches that I bought. All right. All right. Um, so this torque wrench here, I will show in a secondary video. Uh, this one, I have a DIY, uh, uh, wrench added at the end. I bought just the handle. Okay. Uh, I bought just the torque handle and it did not come with the 5 uh, 8 millimeter wrench. Um, so I made one. So I, I'm going to have a video on me making, making the rest of the wrench and calibrating this thing. And so now it's, it's ready to go. All right. So I, uh, I got this super cheap. And so, um, these are the kind that you'll probably find all over eBay, um, which are the kind that, that, uh, that break over. Okay don't like these kind. I really don't like these kind because you're constantly having to flip the stupid thing up. And I just, I just don't like these kind. But I thought I would buy one just to say, here it is. If, if, if you like this kind, great. A buddy of mine works at Keysight and he says, this is what they use and fine and dandy. Okay. A lot of people like them. They're kind of more idiot proof. Uh, if you have a technician who might be a little bit heavy handed, uh, these are hard to misuse. Okay, when they break over, they're pretty obvious that, yeah, that's as far as you want to go. Uh, whereas these, uh, they click, but you can continue to torque on them. So you have to be wary that it's clicked and not go any farther. So like I said, if you're heavy handed, maybe these aren't good for you. All right, so I bought this one and, and I'll have a video showing this one. I just bought this one, uh, which has the little breakover doodad. Uh, these are pretty cheap. I think these are, I think I paid $21 for this one. Uh, I paid $7 for this one. Uh, and in the process, of course, I already bought these and then I came across this one. So I had to have this one too. I paid $29 for this one. Um, but it's an official Pasternak wrench. I know these sell new for $300. Okay. So yeah, nice, uh, a nice one. And it breaks really, really well. I really like the break on it. It's a nice gentle break. Um, and, uh, it's very, I don't know, I just like it. 
when it breaks over, it doesn't snap. It doesn't have a real aggressive spring for the snapback stuff. It's just the cam is machined nicely. All right. So how do these things work? Um, I'll show you a picture here. Um, they have, um, well, first of all, I'll show you uh, uh, this one. I'm going to make a drawing of this one. I'll show it to you. But this thing here is on a pivot. There is a, a little cup here that a steel ball rides in. And then there's a spring in here. So here's the picture. And as you uh, move the handle, uh, that spring engages in that little cup. And it applies a certain number of foot-pounds um, or Newton, what is it? Newton meters. Yeah, Newton meters. Um, and uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, just different units, but uh, 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 different connectors need different amounts of torque. And so a lot of uh, places will have different torque wrenches. Use this one on brass, use this one on stainless steel, use this one on end connectors, use this one on B and C's, use, or not B and C's, but uh, you know, like F connectors. Uh, they'll, they'll all have different torque settings and stuff. Uh, I'll show you a picture here of the various torque settings for various connectors. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them. All right, so let's see how you use one of these things. Let me uh, set up a fictitious, uh, a fictitious setup and we will torque some screws down, or connectors, I should say. All right, so here we have uh, a switch and we're gonna put uh, uh, something on it. And we have stainless steel on stainless steel. Uh, and uh, we're gonna bring in our torque wrench and we are going to screw it down until the, uh, until the thing breaks over, okay? And then you have to flip it back. Um, and so that's the way that one works. All right, the way this one works is that you put it on and you bring it until it just clicks right there. I heard it click and I'm done. And the nice thing about this one, it's ready to go the opposite direction. So this one's, this one's nice. You don't have to always be flipping it back. This is the same way. You don't have to be flipping it back all the time. So I'm going to put it on here. This is the uh, Pasternak one. Um, and I'm going to bring it in. It's going to break and it breaks a nice, a nicer way. I like, I like, I like the way this one breaks. It just, it just breaks real nice. This one is set to eight inch pounds. Uh, this one I calibrated to six inch pounds and this one came calibrated to one Newton meter. Um, and so anyway, that's just the way it is. Uh, these do have a screw in them. You can't calibrate this. This one was sealed and uh, I broke the calibration seal and recalibrated this one. And this one obviously has a big thing on it. So it's, it's, it's sealed. It's sealed as well. And it's marked on here as uh, eight foot pounds. All right, um, so um, should you be using a torque wrench on your Nano VNA or your Tiny SA? Should you be doing that? Uh, no, <laughs> and I'll show you why. Uh, so yeah, let's 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 take a look at that. All right, let's uh, give this one a try. Uh, let's go ahead and try it with one of these. I think they photograph better when they break torque. Uh, I heard a funny little noise. That's not always a good sign. Let's try it again. All right. Try it with this one. Right in the camera, aren't I? Probably, probably right in the camera. So far, so good. You see it? <laughs> you hear it? <laughs> yeah, it broke. Yeah, it snapped right off. There you go. So, uh, 
What happened with this one is that uh, the two bottom legs of the connector were holding it pretty well in until they finally fatigued and snapped off. When those snapped off, then the top just came off. Um, I didn't video it, uh, but before I decided to show this experiment, um, the other side of the PC board had this connector on it, and it snapped off very quickly. Now the difference between this connector and that connector, um, obviously the same PC board, the same pad layouts, the same thickness and everything. Um, the back side of the connector was not soldered down, where in this side they were soldered down. Now, I've seen many, many things from China at least come with only the top side of the PC board soldered and the back side had not been soldered. And that's why I wanted to try this out. So the one that failed very quickly, the back sides did not have, um, did not have the uh, solder on the, on the back side, only on the front side. But on this side, they were soldered on both sides, but it took a little longer for it to fail, but it obviously did fail. And it failed with uh, standard torque settings for everything. So, um, yeah. Now, is it a fair measurement? Um, these are set fairly high. Um, if you had a torque wrench set to only uh, three inch pounds, then would it fail? Yeah, I think eventually it would fail. I think it just fatigues and it finally fails because the brass, quote, brass, <laughs> I think they're pop metal and they're brass coaters. I think brass on these uh, connectors is probably quite fragile. Um, I've always, always noticed that these don't bend like brass. Uh, they bend like pop metal. So I don't know what these are actually made of. Maybe if you had real, you know, really good ones, but the Chinese ones are, are a bit uh, hard in the, in the metal that's used. So anyway, there you go. Yeah, it will break off. So what does that mean? Uh, that means is, yeah, you probably shouldn't be using a torque wrench on your, uh, uh, SA and your, you know, your tiny SA and your nano VNA. Yeah, you probably, you probably should not be using torque wrenches on them. Um, now what does that mean? Well, do you really get bad measurements? Uh, I don't think the dynamic range of those instruments is enough to actually worry too much about torquing the connector. And the frequency is certainly pretty low. Now, some of the more advanced instruments are going up to six gigahertz. So yeah, maybe it does matter there. So what are you gonna do about it? I mean, you can't put a protector. A lot of people put protectors on that are just a, a male, female, and it just extends everything. It just gives you more leverage to break everything off in my, in my estimation. Um, so you could try to put a wrench on this and, a, but you, I mean, when they're inside the nano VNA or inside the, the tiny SA, no, you can't get a wrench on it. So yeah, you're really kind of stuck. Um, so yeah, I don't know what to, I don't know what to say other than if you did have an extension that did have a place to put a wrench, a secondary wrench, uh, on, on the actual, the connector and then another wrench on here and you torque the two together. Yeah, but that's just too much work, right? So I think you're just going to have to be gentle. <laughs> All right, so like I said, got these two used. Uh, they just came like that. I bought this one brand new, um, and it came with a really funny uh, couple pieces of paper. I need to show this to you. This was um, made by the MXITA uh, company, and uh, but the paper that it came with is hilarious. It says, uh, this provides blah, 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 blah. The wrench is universal agilent, part number, and is equipped with SMA, 3.5 millimeter, 2.92 millimeter, 2.4 millimeter, 1.85 millimeter RF connector from Rosenberger, uh, Huber and Sooner, 
Uh, for the situation that the surface may be damaged when the ground knurled nut or no knurled nut is tightened, the product adopts a new open head design which is combined with the torque wrench. <laughs> when the wrench reaches torque, the head will bend 90 degrees. Okay, great. So anyway, <laughs> no, it's not an Agilent. <laughs> No, it's not an Agilent wrench. It's copied from an Agilent wrench. Agilent did, did make these wrenches. Keysight still makes these wrenches. Um, I don't remember, they're probably like $300 wrench as well. Uh, I think I saw one on eBay for sale for 150, a uh, used, used Agilent wrench. <laughs> and I think this part number isn't actually for an SMA either. I think it's for a end connector or something. Um, I, I might be wrong about that, but anyway, it's no, it's not an Agilent, it's not an Agilent wrench. And if you look at the Agilent wrench, the handle is a little bit different in the milling of it. Um, this one has some sharp edges here too. When you break it, these, these edges are kind of sharp. It's, you, I, if, if I was going to keep this one and use it a lot, I would probably round these off. I'm probably going to sell this back on eBay because I don't like the damn thing. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, uh, no, it's not Agilent. And it came with a calibration sticker or calibration sheet. Um, Milo calibrated it in December of 2022 so this might be official and uh it is a one nanometer uh not nanometer one newton meter uh wrench and um it three measurements were, were made okay and it was 0 0.98 0 0.99 and 1.02 so it had a minus two percent change don't know why they say minus 2% change. I guess the, the 0.98 is minus 2%, and but they also had a plus 2% range on the top. Anyway, it's uh, when it's sold, it's guaranteed to have an accuracy of half a percent. So, um, and it was 2% out. Uh, so, <laughs> I don't know. I don't read Chinese, but it just looks, it looks kind of goofy. I'm not, I, I don't know, it just looks kind of goofy. It did, it, it was calibrated though. I mean, it did, it did, I did test it. Um, and it did seem like it was basically what they said it was going to be. Um, and this one is what it said it was going to be. Uh, maybe even a little lower. This one says 8. It was, I measured like 7.8, something like that. Um, and like I said, I calibrated this to 6. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, there you go. A bunch of torque wrenches. And uh, I would say only use them on high-end equipment when you need to and make sure your instrument is able to take torque. Um, don't use it on the cheapy little Chinese toys that we all have.